TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, I just ran into this channel last night, man. I left a comment on one of the videos. It's called This channel is called The Taboo Room. I'm guessing it gives life stories about what's going on in the streets and around the world, but it's only UK stuff. From what I see, these are UK stories, like, which is, you know, fitting. I like what's going on here. Um, I left a comment asking, can I do reactions on the channel? It's right here. So if y'all can go like this comment up, man, um, so you can see it. And he also, this is a new channel, so he needs the support because he rents the studio time. He actually pays At people. Universal Technical Institute, yeah. you don't have to exp He actually pays people to come on here and, you know, as he should, you know, pay for their story until people wants to come on and tell their story themselves. He does have a GoFundMe page. If y'all want to go help, go fund. It's right above my head. Or, you know, just leave a sub, sub, sub up. Watch. Help. That helps the most, man. Anyway, let's get into this, man. Don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. Links down in the description. We did the group chat. And this was, here we go. This is the one I wanted. Open the door. This was, I was um, shot in the face by two London gangsters and survived. Yo. <laughs> That's where we starting off at. Hey. I do not glorify, sensationalize, or condone any of these act stories told. I'm here simply to educate myself and others of the history or current issues um, around the world. This is a mature audiences. It contains graphic descriptions of crime scenes and adult dialogue, maybe some strong language, man. Simple. Let's get into this, man. I'm going to start doing a lot of these, a lot of uh, podcast type, because it's easy to... You know what I'm saying? Easy to navigate on tube of you. I got the person dying here. I got the person dying here. I need a door on the trolley. <coughs> Somebody's dying outside. Somebody's dying outside. I got somebody dying outside. Is that I got somebody dying. You think I'm crazy? Do you see blood? Is that the actual. Recording or was this a... Oh my God. I've been shot in the face. Taboo is a word that states something of obscure nature, something perhaps misunderstood. Born in West London, um, mm. the London borough of Ealing. Um, my childhood was quite good. I was raised by two Ghanaian parents. Uh, my mom was really religious. My dad was kind of strict. Um, I went to a school called Cardinal Wiseman, which was like a Catholic school, good school at the time. I completed with a few GCSEs. I lasted the whole way, didn't get kicked out. Um, I was really into hey. sports at the time, basketball especially. That's, a, that's an achievement in itself, lasting through school. Stay in school, man. I got kicked out of high school. My senior year, I had to go to an alternative school, but I still graduated with the the uh, diploma of my original school, but you know I missed that last year in high school, and I regret getting kicked out. <laughs> I don't regret it, but I'm just like, dang, I should have been there to enjoy my last year. You know what I'm saying? Actually, so um, I was really into sports at the time, basketball especially. So I went to I went college after school for a year, then I went to America for a year. Okay. Ended up coming back after like six months or so. Then I kind of lost the passion for the sports and basketball and started like focusing on, you know, like what 18 year olds focus on, money, girls, whatever. Um, started messing around with the wrong crowd, ended up going to, getting mixed up in the county lines thing. Mm. Um, got in trouble for that, ended up getting a prison sentence for conspiracy for that. County lines, we all know what county lines mean. It's when they go out of town and they get to, um, and they get to, you know, trapping out of town, county lines, bringing it from the, the big town to the small town. 
Then um, when I came out of jail, I kind of reformed myself, got a job, started working on the railways. Like, um, I turned into a railway engineer for a few years. Um, then I moved back to London. So then Jarvis, tell me about the night where you were shot. Tell me about the morning, the whole day. All right, so the morning I got shot, I woke up, I met a trainer reseller, got some yellow Jordans, went Westfields, got an outfit, because it was like Halloween weekend. Oh, you trying to get fresh? Okay. Um, I didn't want to wear an outfit, so I just got a mask. I went to one club in central London that um, evening. Um, that was good vibes, had a good time. Obviously, after I just felt like I could party, I could carry on partying. So um, I met up with a friend of mine and we went to a, part, uh, a house party. To the first. That's mistake number one. 2020, whatever. It, you was in the 2000s going to house parties in London. In Chicago, we stopped going to house parties in 2015. It was over with. No, sir. First party was in a club, the second was a house party. Got there about mm, two o'clock in the night or whatever. Um, was there for about an hour. house party. So the first party was in a club, the second was a house party. Got there about mm, two o'clock in the night or whatever. In the morning. Um, two was there for about an hour. Um, vibing, having a little drink. And then all of a sudden I was approached by some, some people who asked me what area I was from. Um, when they asked me what area I was from, they wasn't really waiting for my response. response, they already had made up their mind. They already believed that they knew me and they knew where I was from, which they was wrong. Um, they then started to move a bit aggressive, like hands down the trousers and stuff, so I kind of knew what was about to happen. So my instincts just told me to get out of there. Um, the party was happening in the canopy, like in the back garden. So instead of me going through the house, I ran straight through the canopy. You wasn't even inside, bro. There's so many red flags. First, Halloween in Chicago, I know, I, but this is, you know, I do the compare and contrast. In Chicago, we don't really even party in it. House parties, they're still a thing, but we don't go to those. We, we, we barely even go outside on Halloween. Like, for what? I'm good. Unless I'm going downtown in, a, in somebody's Club, you can't, I'm good. Down the side of the house. As I got down the side of the house, that's when the gunshots started going off. Bam, bam, I've heard like two gunshots go off. And then this time it's kind of like threw me off balance and I've slipped. At the time I've slipped, I've, um, I've got up, but as I've slipped and, and I'm getting up, I can still hear the gunshots going off. Um, I've tried to run because I could see my car inside, so I've tried to run towards my car. As I tried to run towards my car, I could feel that um, I had been shot in the shoulder. So I spun around and I asked, like, what the reason for them shooting me was. Oh, you did. Wait a minute, sir. Hold on, let me see if I can do I've been shot in the shoulder. You run down the alley, you felt yourself get shot in the shoulder, okay. Shoulder. So I spun around and I asked, like, what the re reason for them shooting me was. You asked, so as they're shooting, you spun around and asked them why? And yes, I have been in this situation. So yes, I can comment on it. I have full, <laughs> yes, I have been in this situation. If anybody was wondering, yes. It's a, I, I, and I, okay, so your mind is not completely there when you're getting, you know, shot at. So I can kind of see, like, especially for the first time, you don't really know what's happening. 
But that's OD. That's wild. Because at this point, I felt like I can't outrun bullets. So you're right. Let me find out what's going on. Let me see if I can resolve it, even though it was too late. Because about five, six gunshots have already gone off. Yeah. At this point, I've turned around to try and ask, like, what the reasoning was for what I, what I'd done wrong, basically. And then they just carried on shooting, shooting, shooting. Bam, bam. Bullets then hit me in my stomach, kind of winded me. I tried to turn around and bullet it hit me in my bum cheek. The one in my bum cheek sent me off balance. I hit the ground. As I hit the ground, I've heard like, like people shouting basically to like, to finish me off, kill me, like kill him, fam. Like that's what I was hearing. Then I've see, I've heard footsteps running towards me, so I knew. That's the worst sound you want to hear. Like, dang, I, what did I? I'm trying to party. I came out for Halloween. I'm just trying to get it in. Wrong neighborhood, wrong place at the wrong time, man. That sucks. Videos, whoever it was, was coming to finish me off. So I've, um, all of a sudden, I've just heard bam and a bullet's like, and I just felt like my teeth crumbling in the back of my mouth, but I can still hear and see. So I've seen the guy, no, I haven't seen the guy, but I've heard the guy running off. So straight away, my instincts kicked in to get up and try and move out the way because I was in the middle of the road at this point. So I've got up, I've moved up, I've got onto the pavement, I've tried to jump over someone's fence, back garden fence. I banged on their window. Obviously, I've realised no one's um, um, responding. So I've um, taken my phone out of my pocket. I've tried to call an ambulance. At this point, my phone wasn't working because all the blood from my mouth was dripping onto my phone. Oh, wow. As that's happening now, I've heard my name being called. Um, it was like two, it was the one person that I went to the party with and two people that had recognised me from the party. So I've tried to, I've, I've managed to get myself back over the fence onto the pavement when they then took my car keys, got my car and helped me into the back seat. So I'm in the back seat, my friend's driving. As he's driving, me and him have having conversations back and forth. I'm asking him how long. I'm telling him I don't want to die, this and that. He's like, don't worry, like, you're good, whatever. That's a reasonable conversation in this situation. That is very reasonable. Hey, people, listen, people may give, and I'm not saying he was doing none of this because he was an innocent guy, mistaken identity. That's why I don't party on holidays where you people can wear masks and it's accepted. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. Um, but, like, anybody who's yelling, oh, man, I ain't afraid to do this. I ain't afraid to do Yes, you, okay. When you get in that situation, you definitely gonna be praying. You gonna be crying for your mom. You gonna be everything gonna be running through your head. We got to the hospital. Die. This and that. I feel He's you. Like, Don't worry. Like you're good. Whatever. We got to the hospital now. He's running to the hospital, and he's tried to beg for help. No one in the hospital's tried to help because they said that the hospital was closed. So what's that? Hold on. Time out. So hospitals close in the, in the UK? The hospitals don't close here. I've never went to a hospital and they'd be like, we're closed. That's not a thing. It's not happening now. He's ended up bringing an ambulance to come pick me from that hospital to take me to another one. No it hospital took about closes. five, 10 minutes. Then once I was picked up by this next ambulance, I was taken to another hospital where I was then put, um, sedated. I was put into a sedated coma. Um, so they can operate on me, took all the bullets, bullets out of me and stuff. Um, wired my jaw because my jaw was all, all over the place. So they had to wire my jaw. I had a metal wire in my mouth and I had missing teeth and some missing bone and I had to get a metal plate put in my jaw. Yikes, man. So when I got jumped in Chicago, I got a, I got a hairline fracture in my jaw, and I had three teeth missing, and I have three root canals, and I got three false teeth. But I didn't have to get my jaw wired shut. I got jumped by 30 people as well, so it wasn't a light jump. It was real. <laughs> um, it's not it's I woke up after like two bro. days after the sedated coma. I couldn't walk for about two days, and then I managed to get my balance after like the third day, but I was still in pain. Um, I had a hole in my bladder at this point. Um, mm. I had big scars everywhere. Yeah. Travis, why was you shot? I believe it was a mistaken identity. I believe they 
really did believe that maybe I was one of their enemies or one of their ops or something. But yeah, mistaken idea. What happened to the word pagan? That was a fire word. All right. Man. Plenty, no reason. Because yeah, that was definitely mistaken no one identity. A reason to want to actually kill me. Do you know what I mean? And how did your family and your mum and dad respond to this? Well, at first, like, so the first time I spoke to my dad, he was like, he was a bit like, what have you done? Like, who have you, who have you upset kind of thing? Just like everyone else probably thought maybe I upset somebody. But then obviously once I got a chance to explain things, my mum and dad, they both realised that it was a mistake. Do you know what I mean? My mum, uh, I feel sorry for her because I know it was traumatic for her because she saw me like the day I was in a &E, So she saw when I was asleep um, my tongue was big and black, like something you've never seen before. Um, my jaws were hanging off and I had all these um, chews hanging out of me, so I just know it, it, um, it caused her a bit of trauma as well. You know what I mean? Jarvis, if you was to meet the people who shot you, what would you say to them? I'd just say... Hey, good question. Maybe be more careful, like, because life's precious, like, you nearly, take, you nearly took away my life for absolutely no reason, like, do you know what I mean? Um, I hear you. With them as rogue men, at, at whatever they were thinking at that point, it didn't matter. It was just to go time. They thought you was somebody else. This is, this is why it's hard being a young African-American person in 2020. And anything past 2017 being hard, it's, it's young. I mean, it's hard being young and African American because mistaken identity. You 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 gotta you gotta be aware of of ops. They not even your ops, but people thinking you something that you're not. If you dress a certain way, if you look a certain way, like it's wild. Um. Yeah. And before we finish, Jarvis, is there anything that you'd like to say? Yeah, I just like to thank God for. I'd like to thank you for giving me the um, opportunity to come and tell you my story because I haven't really had chances to speak about this. And um, yeah, I'd just like to thank God for just saving me, giving me a reason to be here, making me feel like I've got a reason to be here. Hey, salute, man. Salute, man. I'm glad you made it out of there, bro. I'm glad you can tell us all your story, man. And I'm glad you, you know, can walk around this earth still. Keep the gun violence down, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post no least. Remember, man, go over to the taboo room, link down in the description. Let's sub up, man. I'm done.